Hey everyone, it's Dom time. Biggest issue arguably of our time. Still all the debate after all that we've seen of the 2200 pages of the Affordable Care Act. We're talking with Matt Rooney and Elliot Griffin tonight, both on opposite sides of this. One, Elliot saying it's mostly misinformation. Matt, real agenda that's uh, difficult with this and that's why it ought to be opposed. Let's go to some more callers. Linda in Gloucester is next. Linda, welcome to Dom time. Thanks, Dom. Um, if there's misinformation, it's coming from the Obama administration. I've been a working person my entire life, middle class, middle class person, middle-aged woman. I have to tell you, my premiums are going up and my services are going down. I have a friend in my age group who uh, injured a hamstring and had to wait three weeks and was continuously denied approval for an MRI. I have a lot of friends in the same bracket with the same stories. I mean, it's all smoke and mirrors. This is going to help. This is going to help a lot of people, uninformed voters, bought into this guy for a second term. God knows why. But, you know, I know for a fact that all my services are going down. Aetna had an announcement today out in California that they're going to be revisiting a lot of their services. Some of the people that they insure may be forced to other providers, all because of this Obamacare. All right, so we, no, we got your point. Hold, hold up, Linda. Let, let Elliot respond. Go right ahead. Is the response then that Obamacare will tighten up and mandate even more? Well, I would say a, a lot of um, the true effects of, of Ob Obamacare, or the Affordable Care Act, as I like to call it, um, will be going to, into effect in 2014. And when we see these health insurance exchanges come out and people, and there's real competition between health insurance and states, and people have the opportunity to choose the best um, insurance, then that's, that's really when we're going to, to see savings go into effect. Matt? Let's look at what's happening already. There was an article the other day, I think it was even in the New York Times, which definitely isn't on my side of the aisle. And they were talking about how what's already happening in a half a dozen states that are doing the exchanges is a mm -hmm. lot of the major health care providers are deciding not to participate. And if they're getting involved at all, they're providing these plans that are paying actual health care providers, mm -hmm. the doctor you go to, to actually get your care bottom barrel rates. So what happens? They're turning it down. All right, let's, it's going to turn into Medicaid the, light. Let's talk about the other side. We're in New Jersey. Governor Christie, Republican, yep. moderate to conservative, accepted the expansion into his state through Medicaid of Obamacare. All right. Now, he made that decision, and people in New Jersey seem to welcome that. I haven't it, seen that detract from him at all, Matt. They're going to begin to continue to see it, though, as our premiums continue to go up, because the Obama administration told us when they were seeking office the last mm -hmm. time around and they were championing this bill that premiums were going to start to go down by about $2,500 per family. Now what are they saying? That they've been safely reelected? They're saying they're going to go up by about 12000 over the next decade. When it comes to the Medicaid expansion, Governor Christie did the right thing, um, and surprisingly, I'll applaud Governor Christie on that one, and expanding Medicaid. The, the federal mm -hmm. government is underwriting the bill for the Medicaid expansion in states, and uh, states have the option to, to opt in or opt out. Pennsylvania did not choose that, and thousands are going to go without coverage, um, specifically mm -hmm. in, in rural Pennsylvania where it's really needed. But let's, right. but let's look at exactly what that plan is though. Medicaid is notoriously not a great health care plan. If you break it down and look at all the medical yeah, studies. Yeah, something. That's what the argument would be. Well, in some cases you can argue it's almost worse. If you look at people that are treated for neck and head cancer, they have a 50 percent higher rate of dying if they have a Medicaid plan versus a private insurer. But we have people so in rural can, Pennsylvania going without, that have all so many pre-existing conditions, have so that are, are dying of things that could have been prevented had they been able to so see a So why don't we focus doctor. on creating a system where they can get the best health care, a private insurer, which is what people used to expect and they used to rely on to get the best health care in the world. But we had 30 or 40 million people that did not have health care and it wasn't addressed. Take yeah. your pick on the guesstimate. And that's exactly part of the problem. This is something that this big government mindset created because what do they do in a state like mine for years they've had mandates making a young guy like me pay for mammograms in my health care plan a very important thing for some people well, let me ask you but, should that be isn't this a flaw of Obamacare in other words he doesn't want to pay for certain aspects of this doesn't think it applies to him at all why not just have catastrophe a, a, a catastrophic care for a young guy someone under 30 let's say 
And, and for a young guy, I'm sure his, his premiums will be a lot less than mine. And one thing that Obamacare does do is ensure that just because I'm a woman, I'm not paying more for my health insurance versus Matt because he's a man. Um, and and the, Obamacare for me always comes back to being an equality issue. We have mm -hmm. um, people that are below the poverty line, but because our governors are choosing to forego the Medicaid expansion are still unable, still falling through loopholes. All right, let's take another call for you guys. Let's go to Craig. Uh, Craig, you're on the Dom Giordano Show. Hi. Yes, how you doing, Dom? Good. Hey, listen, uh, the government has no reason to be involved in our personal lives anyhow. My goodness, they're not our caretakers, you know? I mean, it's only since the, the, the 60s that we had the advent of these social programs, and we survived for 200 years prior to that. And now we have this entitlement situation. The young lady spoke about equality. It's not an equality issue. There's no equality guarantees other than the opportunity to have life, liberty, and the All right, so let me ask you, Craig, That's... you're on record. You don't think health care is a right then? No, I don't believe do you, it do you is you think not it's a right. A right. I think health care is a right. It's a right in so many other countries. If we want to continue to call our, ourselves the, the number one in this leader in the world, mm. then we need to provide. Matt, uh, is it a right? Insurance. Here's the real. No, it's not a right. And I think what's so unbelievably ridiculous about this is every time the left labels something a right, the people that get it get poorer and sicker. And this is just another example. People are losing their jobs mm. because of this bill. They're getting dumped into worse health care plans like Medicaid, where you have a much higher risk of dying when you're getting treated than you otherwise would if you had had the private plan when you still have a job. And yet we're supposed to be grateful that we have this new quote unquote right. Let's take another call for you guys. Ruth is next with us from New Jersey. Hey, Ruth, welcome to Dom Time. Hi, Dom. How you doing? Good, Ruth. I was so I was so concerned about this that I wanted to get a doctor's perspective on it. So when I went to my cardiologist, I asked him exactly what Obamacare meant to him. And he said it was going to be a multi-million dollar business, bigger than Google, that there would be a 15-person panel that would have the final say. He's already been instructed he's not allowed to order more than 200 stress tests a year. And that uh, it's it's going to be horrendous. They will even have the ability to fire him if he does not comply with what they say needs to be done with All right, Obamacare. Hold up with that. Now, this is uh, someone claiming they spoke to their doctor, Elliot. Is the doctor misinformed? What would there be their motivation or agenda here? There seems to be a tension with the Affordable Care Act and a number of doctors. Um, and that that's, tension certainly seems to be there. And, but there were also a number of doctors' organizations that supported this legislation and, and were a part of writing this legislation. This is not something that the Obama administration just went in, into a room and, and came out mm -hmm. back out with 2,000 pages. Um, th there's something that you, doctors were a part of this discussion. And I'd also like to um, go back to the, to the last caller who said the, the government doesn't have their right to be in our personal health care, but the government was also footing the bill for millions of Americans who were using the emergency room as their primary care doctor mm -hmm. and, and footing that bill, footing that bill for $500 for a Tylenol. So we, we, have to, we have to find this happy medium because we can't continue to finance that and grow our, grow our deficit through those means. So ad starts to appear, I think it's Wednesday, we'll see this ad. What's the tenor of the ad in 30 seconds that we have left? that'll be put out on the Affordable Care Act? Um, the tenor of the ad, the ad it's, it's numbers. It, it's talking about the 3 million young people that can stay on their parents' health insurance, the 54 million people who have received preventative, preventative mm -hmm. services since the law passed, um, the 17 million children that won't be denied um, health care because of pre-existing conditions. It's, it just lays out, lays out the numbers for the people to interpret themselves. All right, watch for that. Elliot, thanks for joining us tonight. Matt Rooney, yeah. welcome back. Thanks for joining us with SaveJersey.com. Thank okay. Thanks for joining us. Coming up, the DREAM Act partially is passed by an assembly in New Jersey today. I'll tell you what I think on that on Dom Time. Hey everyone, earlier today an assembly, a budget assembly in the New Jersey Assembly said that the DREAM Act is a go. They voted that way after a lot of compelling testimony on both sides. This means if it passed the House in New Jersey, that people that are here, there are certain requirements, three years, high school, et cetera, who were brought here illegally by the parents would get the same tuition break in state as would people that grew up here legally. I oppose this. 
I'm sorry that these kids were brought here illegally, but if you're a kid in Pennsylvania coming to New Jersey, you don't get that tuition break and you're here legally, these are out-of-state students, in my view. Something else has to be done, but they shouldn't get in-state tuition. Watch for this on future shows. I hope to have you call in and be part of the show tomorrow night on Dom Time, starting at 7 p.m.